Good morning and welcome to Learn for Life News, the second edition of our digital news for teachers in the morning. A little bit late today because we've been looking at the American elections. Well done, Barack Obama. Okay, we're looking at November the 7th, Wednesday, November the 7th. 2012. Uh, At Ideas Factory has asked me to include bit.ly links to all the links that I talk about in the program. Uh, It makes it easy for him to write down as he's listening. Uh, I don't know where he's listening, but uh, that will be done from today. So I've been uh, also sorting out all the logistics behind that. So we're going to start off We have four sections in the uh, podcast this morning. The first is uh, looking at the ICT, Computer Science and Digital Literacy Debate, and the draft programs of study that the different organisations are going to have to uh, tackle and look at. Now, if you want a back end to the story... I think you should go along to the uh, to the Royal Society uh, site and have a look at uh, their report that came out in 2010. All the links for this section are at bit.ly. That's bit.ly, B-I-T-L-Y dot com forward slash bundles forward slash iBeams forward slash one. And I'll give you different URLs for each thing I talk about as a bit.ly as well. All the bundles will be included in a Liquorize document at the end of the podcast, a video and an audio as we come on stream during the day. So looking at the debate, uh, one of the things to go to is the shut down or restart Royal Society site. And that is bit.ly forward slash Royal Society ICT. And that will give you a little background to uh, what happened when Michael Gove disapplied the ICT uh, POS. And uh, this Royal Society report looks at the sort of different ways of uh, thinking about digital literacy, ICT and everything else. You really should have a look at that whole thing. It was published in, uh, sorry, 2012. The evidence gathering was uh, finished in 2010. Now, uh, there are a number of organisations looking at this whole question, and we are coming up to the deadline for consultation on this. So I'll give you another couple of URLs. Uh, NACE are looking at this, and they are bit.ly. NACE ICT. Have a look at the NACE uh, uh, document on that. A very similar one will be the the computing at school. CAS, so that'll be bit.ly forward slash comp school. And uh, two other documents that I think you should look at. There's a new Computing at School CAS community site. You have to join Computing at School because it really is, if you haven't joined it, a wonderful place for computer science, uh, ICT, digital literacy. They're all discussed. It is an emphasis. There is an emphasis on computer science, but they are having an excellent debate Uh, down at the CAS community site, which is basically a notice board uh, that informs you by email of all the different opinions of members. And they are discussing quite intensively at the moment the computer science, digital literacy, ICT debate. And that is bit.ly, CAS community, C-A-S community. Go and have a look at that. And lastly, for really detailed and uh, granular information on how to feedback and all the different bits and bobs, I would recommend the Education Futures uh, site. And that really is well worth put, put going along to. It's the ICT curriculum Ed Futures uh, bit. And that is bit.ly Ed Future ICT. All those sites are under bitleek.com forward slash bundles, forward slash iBeams, forward slash one. You'll find a whole debate there to get your head around. And that those are the core sites where you can go and uh, discuss with other people or look at the evidence so far or look at the granular information that people have been submitting. I really do recommend you go along there. OK, the next section we're looking at are events, is events. And this is bit.ly forward slash bundles, forward slash I-beams, forward slash two. Now, one of the really interesting events coming up is, 
and this is outside of the sphere, obviously, of ICT and digital literacy. This is an app workshop at the London Educational Games Meetup Group, which the hashtag is leg up, which is very good, capital L-E-G up. And uh, that hashtag, uh, that hashtag is, is, is quite funny looking at it now. I should imagine that's because Kirsten Campbell House is behind it. Um, that's been held at 1KX on November the 14th uh, of this month. And uh, they're looking at a new format for this event. Uh, rather than having talks from games uh, designers or workshop designers, they're going to split the audience into a number of smaller groups and assign a facilitator to each group. I think it's well worth going. 7 p.m. Uh, down in King's Cross, 1KX. And really do think about attending that. That's on uh, Wednesday, November the 14th. That's uh, next week. And you're going to have people, uh, facilitators are Ian Wiley, Willy from Apata, makers of My Note Games. Kate Ho from Interface 3, makers of Talk Maths. Uh, Laurent Ahuru. Ahuro from Flash Apps. So get yourself along to that event because uh, the Leg Up group, London Educational Games Meetup group, is very interesting and well worth attending. It's a good night out. So uh, Bitly, London Ed Games. Okay, in this event section, you cannot fail to have noticed that the Mozilla Festival is going to begin from November the 9th to the 11th at uh, near the O2 building down in Greenwich in Ravensbourne uh, uh, Art College and it is well worth coming. Um, I would look up Bitly Mozilla Fest and that will tell you all about the festival, the schedule, everything else. Lots and lots of stuff going on Friday the 9th, Saturday the 10th and uh, Sunday the 11th of November. Um, they're looking at things like building Mozilla audio and video on the web, some design challenges, coding for teens, hackable games, hacktivate learning, making the web. Um, this is where the informal meets the formal, meets the um, social, meets the corporate, and everyone has a massively mash-up time down at the uh, by the O2 at Ravensbourne. Well, well, well worth uh, going along to that. I think you have to pay a little uh, a little fee. I can't see what that is at the moment, but go along and have a look at bit.ly forward slash Mozilla Fest. Okay, the next, moving on quickly, very quickly, the next uh, one I want to talk about is uh, Tell AC UK. So we'll we'll um, we'll look at that now. If I can just pull it up on screen, yeah, here we go. Tell ACK was on yesterday. Unfortunately, I didn't include it in the podcast. It's technology enhanced learning, and basically, it's tell at the Royal Society about three hundred educators, students, policymakers, IT industry representatives, academics, and general public members. Uh, will attend TEL's final dissemination event at the Royal Society, and it features demos of the eight TEL projects, hardware and software, keynote from Minister of State, premiere of TEL commissioned film Inventing the Future of Learning, which is well worth watching, um, and all the other resources that are out there. It was, by all accounts, a really good conference. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to cover that, but if you go along to the TEL site, and it'll be bit.ly, TEL a C U K T E L A C U K or T E L dot A C dot U K. You can read about it there. Next event is ongoing and it's the MirandaNet um, International ICT Policy event that's going on for a few days. I would highly recommend you look at the uh, archives of the stream and the discussions. Uh, as always, MirandaNet has got a live event, um, a live discussion going on between people and educators and outside bodies and that is bit.ly forward slash miranda net really really well worth having a look at that today if you've got a couple of minutes uh the last event i want to talk about today is um i think no that's it basically those are the those are the three four events that you need to think about um see if you can get along and you will find all those in 
events and information under bit.ly forward slash bundles forward slash ibeams forward slash two. Okay, in the next section, penultimate section of the broadcast this morning, you will find we're going to talk about several little really useful resources for teachers in class. I don't really like to give whole lists of resources out in this broadcast because you can find whole swathes of resources out there on the net. What I want to do is give value added to people who are listening in the morning before school or after school or during lunch break. Surprisingly, we've got a few people listening during lunch break. They must be uh, masochistic in that sense. Anyway, if you're listening to this on, on headphones or on your phone, here are some really, really useful resources that I've come across in the last couple of days. If you are making uh, resources for a flipped classroom or you're making any kind of video resource to show off to people, you need to go to Kathy Schrock's Guide to Everything and her screencasting ideas for the classroom. This probably is the ultimate screencasting site. There's a Screencasting Academy, Screencasting Wiki, uh, all the different applications, Jing, Screen, Castomatic, Screener. Uh, you'll find that at um, Schrock, Schrock Screencast, S-C-H-R-O-C-K, Screencast. And that's after, obviously, the bit.ly dot, um, bit dot L-Y uh, uh, URL. Well worth going along to see that absolutely comprehensive resource. Um, unbelievable. Now, the other resource uh, is a very interesting one. It's 366 Web 2.0. And basically, Ian in Sheffield, uh, on Twitter, Ian in Sheffield, um, has been creating this resource since the beginning of the year, and he's he's come up to 312 now, I should imagine. Um, this particular resource is talking about Voki and how you can use it in the class. Basically, it's an audio boo and an exemplar of every single Web2 resource he has found on the web, and he's sort of put them uh, from number one to three six six, and he's on three eleven. Really worth going along. That's Bitly forward slash 366 web2, web2. Ian's resource is brilliant. He's kept it up all year. Go and visit that. Have a look at them. They are excellent exemplars telling you how to use them and where to use them in the class. Okay, another quick uh, resource, a general one is again the Guardian teacher network resource, how to use social media in schools, a guide to Twitter, Facebook and Pinterest. Um, that's bit.ly, social media in schools. That's a good one to have a look at. Um, I'm sort of running as fast as I can now because time is running out. Another beautiful resource is uh, an infographic. And I don't usually like infographics, especially if they um, have sort of uh, information on them that is a bit dodgy and you don't know where it's come from. But this one is really good. It's bit.ly ed tech jargon and it tells you all the different ed tech jargon uh, nomenclature or stuff that you've got uh, out there that people talk about and as an example um, if I could pull it up here you can see the different uh, names and uh, uh, definitions of, of, of ed tech jargon you've got a cheat seat so you've got MOOC, gamification, uh, virtual classroom, digital story learning, adaptive learning, blended learning, differentiated learning, ebooks, digital storytelling, a little definition of each one happily uh, put in there. So that's uh, another really good resource. And lastly, in this section, is how to use uh, a Google Calendar in your school, which would be very useful to some people, I should imagine, within their schools. So how to set up a Google Calendar, the Educator's Guide to Google Calendar at the EduBlogger. And this is uh, bit.ly forward slash schools calendar. And that will tell you a few tips and tricks about how to stick it up. Uh, intro to the calendar, Google Calendar for school, how to put it in a blog page, how to put it in your blog sidebar, intro to appointment slots, uh, how to set up an appointment page, how to book an appointment syncing to your Google Calendar. And then all the different ways that you can set it up within school and put your appointments in and use that in a very, very precise and easy way within your institution.
<clears throat> okay, that's that so far. And then we come to the last spot today. As usual, this is our uh, glorious leaders spot where we talk about how our glorious leader has been less than uh, useful in his pursuit of uh, total domination of the education space in this country. It's a TES um, article from their magazine uh, on the 2nd, and it's talking about how doubt is cast on the international data he cited to drive reforms, uh, the PISA study. And uh, I like from this uh, one report that Andrea Schleicher, the OECD official who runs PISA, told TES that the data used by Mr. Gove was a little bit dodgy. Okay, so there we go. The data underpinning the reforms and uh, his reference to the PISA uh, rankings are uh, a little bit dodgy in the way he's used them, which of course is flagged up in the PISA document itself, saying that people shouldn't take uh, the data in that way. But there we go. I hope that gives you inspiration for the day ahead, and I wish you all a really productive, useful day. Bye now. <laughs>